Aliphatic amino acids are nonpolar and therefore hydrophobic. A simple mnemonic to remember the six aliphatic amino acids is glaciers in Alaska valiantly locate isolated prowlers. Glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, proline. It is key to remember them in this order. Glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, proline because this makes it relatively easy to remember the structures. Let's start with glycine. This is the simplest amino acid and the only non-chiral one. A chiral carbon is attached to four different groups. Glycine is attached to two hydrogens, since it's R group, the group that changes among the 20 amino acids, is a hydrogen. Alanine has a methyl group instead of a hydrogen. From here on in, the amino acids look a bit like a germinating seed, with the R group as the growing root. In valine, the root splits into two rootlets, both methyls. In leucine, the root grows longer, and here the root analogy stops. You can think of isoleucine as a conformational isomer of leucine. Proline is the only ring structure, but note it is not aromatic. Hence, it is not one of the three aromatic amino acids. And now for a brief review. Glaciers, glycine, in Alaska, alanine, valiantly, valine, locate, leucine, isolated, isoleucine, prowlers, proline. Aromatic amino acids fulfill the three rules of aromaticity. They are rings, they must be planar, usually sp2 hybridized, with the unhybridized p orbitals overlapping to form a continuous ring of planar orbitals. The ring must follow Huckel's rule, having 4n plus 2 electrons in its system of conjugated p orbital clouds, where n is an integer. Here is a way to remember the three aromatic amino acids. Remember how glaciers in Alaska valiantly locate isolated prowlers? Well, why do people still go there? It's because the aroma of fine pine and yellow timber are worth the trip. The aromatic compounds include phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. Phenylalanine has a benzyl attached to it. Tyrosine is almost identical but has a hydroxyl group. Tryptophan has two aromatic rings, one a five-membered ring with a nitrogen, and one a six-membered ring. The rings sort of look like a W if you think about it. Unlike with the aliphatic amino acids, where the single letter abbreviations are all the first letter of the amino acid names, the aromatic amino acids have weird single letter abbreviations. You can remember them this way. Pine trees, phenylalanine, have fine needles, F. Timber, tyrosine, is yellow, Y. And the trip is worth it, W. Two of the amino acids are alcohols. While alcohol is a serious threat, memorizing these amino acids will be a serious treat. Serine and threonine have very easy abbreviations. The one-letter abbreviations are just the first letter of each amino acid, while the three-letter abbreviations are just the first three letters of each amino acid. What a serious treat! Here is the structure of serine. As you can see, the structure of threonine just has an extra methyl group attached to the carbon making it chiral. Three of the amino acids are bases. Here's a way to remember them. Basically, is lost kid always returned? The basic amino acids are histidine, lysine, and arginine, and the one-letter abbreviations for the last two are not the first letter of each. While histidine is abbreviated as H, lysine is abbreviated as K, and arginine is abbreviated as R. Luckily, the three-letter abbreviations are the first three letters of each amino acid. Let's look at histidine. Well, not much we can do here but just memorize it. But here is the cool bit. Once we memorize histidine, it is very easy to remember the other two basic amino acids. We can change histidine to lysine thus. First, remove the two double bonds and the bond between the N with the lone pair and the carbon on its top left. Next, remove the NH. Change the N with a lone pair to an NH3. This is lysine. Now, let's change lysine to arginine. Switch the CH2 and NH3+. Erase the 3+, and the H2. 
draw in two NH2s attached to the carbon. Since carbon makes four bonds, one of the nitrogens will have a double bond to a carbon. As a result, it will have a positive charge, and that's arginine. Now, let's compare the three side by side. His, histidine, lost, lysine, kid, K, always, arginine, returned, R. There are two sulfur-containing amino acids, and they are special, because each can link to other sulfur-containing amino acids through oxidation of their sulfhydryl bonds to form sulfur-sulfur bonds. But that is outside the scope of this video. An easy way to remember the sulfur-containing amino acids is to methodically check the path for sulfur. Methionine and cysteine are the two sulfur-containing amino acids, and fortunately, the abbreviations are just the first letter of each and the first three letters of each. Here is methionine. To get cysteine, you check between two rocks, the methyls, get rid of them, and all you're left with is sulfur desperately trying to hide behind the one rock left. There are two acid amino acids. As Peter digested the glue, his stomach became acidic. The two acid amino acids are aspartate and glutamate. These are actually two excitatory neurotransmitters of the brain. In other words, they make postsynaptic neurons more likely to fire. Anyway, the three-letter abbreviations are just the first three letters of each, but the one-letter abbreviations are not. Here is the structure of aspartate. Just blunt memorization, unfortunately. Glutamate is easy to remember, though. You just glue on another carbon. Ta-da! The amide amino acids are so named because they have an amide functional group. A useful mnemonic is, amid this neatly stacked asparagus is a gluttonous quail. The two amide amino acids are asparagine and glutamine. The one-letter abbreviation for asparagine is N, and for glutamine, it's Q. Since the three-letter abbreviations can't be the same as for the acid amino acids, they are ASN for asparagine and GLN for glutamine. Attention! Be careful and don't confuse the acid amino acids with the amide amino acids. You can remember that the amide amino acids are the ones ending in ene because amides and amines are often confused as the two functional groups with nitrogens. Here is asparagine's structure. Unfortunately, blunt memorization is needed here, but it is easy to remember glutamine because what happens to those who are gluttonous? They get bigger, and that is exactly what happens to glutamine. It gets an extra carbon. Now I wonder if any of you have noticed a cool pattern between the acid and amide amino acids. Well, aspartate and asparagine both have two carbons in their R groups, and glutamate and glutamine both have three carbons in their R groups. The only difference between the pair of acids and the pair of amides is the following. Just a last point about amino acid properties. Acid and basic amino acids are charged amino acids. All aliphatic amino acids, as well as methionine, a sulfur-containing amino acid, and phenylalanine and tryptophan, which are aromatic amino acids, are nonpolar amino acids. All alcohol amino acids and amide amino acids, as well as cysteine, which is a sulfur-containing amino acid, and tyrosine, which is an aromatic amino acid, are polar amino acids. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It would help me make more videos. And make sure to comment with any topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. Also, it would be really nice if you could support me on Patreon. Thank you.